camera right there. You see the camera? Okay. Okay. Hey everybody, it's the service man, and this is the service station interviews of SOBs. <laughs> and this week our SOB is Kelly Flannery. Flannery. Is that Irish? Yes. Is that why you have green walls? Kelly Green. Kelly Green? Okay. Uh, Kelly Flannery with the South Tampa Chamber of Commerce. So we have the STCOC SOB. Right. I I N C in charge? No, I C? Something like that? What is your position? What is your exact title? Uh, President and CEO. President and CEO of the South Tampa Chamber. And how did how did you arrive at this destination? Uh, I'm a Tampa native, born and raised. So Tampa is my passion. What, what part of Tampa? South Tampa. Okay, very cool. So I grew up just a few miles from where we're sitting mm -hmm. um, and moved away, came back home, um, and wanted to do something to give back to the community that's given me so much. Oh, very cool. So how long have you had this position? I've been in this position for one year, but I've been with the Chamber for two years. I was previously the Director of Events and Membership. Okay. So let me back up for a minute and tell you how I got here and why you're sitting next to me. Okay. Um, I was a very active member of the chamber a few years ago and I went away and um, do you ever like there's a song like a top 40 song or a video or something that comes out or that dress that was on the internet mm -hmm. and everyone's constantly talking about it to the point at which you can't take it anymore and you're like <laughs> what is the deal with this dress? Well that was the deal with Kelly Flannery oh. and, and the South Tampa Chamber of Commerce. I was like it was unavoidable. Like, I don't know what happened. I don't know if you guys got a billion dollar marketing campaign. <laughs> like, I don't know what happened, but all of a sudden it was unavoidable. So um, I kept talking to, uh, you know, the people that I uh, take advice from, uh, you know, influential people in my life, people that have, uh, you know, kind of tried to get me back on the straight and narrow because I wander off occasionally. Oh. And, <laughs> and they kept, you know, bringing up South Tampa Chamber, Kelly, Kelly, South Tampa Chamber, Chamber, no matter where I went, Kelly, 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 Kelly. I'm like, who is this Kelly person and why won't you get out of my head? <laughs> so I finally came down to see you one day. Right, I remember. Yeah, and um, that was months before I joined. Mm -hmm. uh, and, I, and I voiced, you know, my concerns with you and you sat there attentively and listened, which blew me away because no one listens to anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, including this interview and it was just strange to me that um, you know you you actually like you were present and most people aren't present anymore most people you know are in their cell phone or checking their email they're doing everything but being present or talking with you and this that and the other and you were so present that I was like is she okay like did she fall asleep <laughs> in the middle of you, know? you were so present that I was like wow she's really paying attention you know so um, I went away for a few more months. Uh, I straightened up my affairs so that when I came back, I could come back with a big splash that I wanted to. And um, and here I am. And uh, if it hadn't been for the you know endless accolades that you get, I don't know what you're paying these people, but it's <laughs> it's not enough. I mean, if I could if I could have that many people running around town singing my praises, woo! Well, I appreciate that. Yeah. However, I really can't take all the credit. We have a stellar staff um, and a huge group of volunteers that really help to make the chamber what it is. Um, and members such as yourself who are out in the community um, promoting the chamber in South Tampa. Mm -hmm. So I, I appreciate the compliments, but I definitely can't <laughs> take all the credit. How do you motivate volunteers? Because it's as a business owner, and you know, this is why this is an SOB interview, mm -hmm. Service Obsessed Businesses is what that stands for. And though, although the, the chamber um, isn't typically looked at as a business um, in my opinion it was always a business mm -hmm. because if, if I'm gonna give my hard-earned money to um, any organization I want to know that there's a reason for it I don't like just making it rain throwing dollars out there and praying that it lands in the right spot <laughs> no. You know, no that's not me I mean before the economy evaporated yeah I probably did way too much of that uh, but since then I'm very cautious nowadays and um, yeah I came back because uh, of your presence and you know the, the accolades I heard about you but I also saw a shift in uh, leadership and direction and you guys really do treat this like a business that has to answer to someone it is 
Yeah. <laughs> it is a business, and I answer to 500 um, invested members every single day. That you have to see all the time. That I get, that I get to see all the time. <laughs> that you get to, see, I get all to see all the time. Right. Um, Such I, a politician. Uh, <laughs> Kelly Flannery for mayor. What year? 2020? Something like that? Maybe? Not anytime soon. Yeah? Okay. But it's it's in the... <laughs> maybe not mayor. <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. Trust me. It's going to happen. Whether she wants it or not, it'll be a write-in. All the votes will come through. Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that, um, but I think because we treat it like a business is probably why you've seen so many changes. Right. Um, three years ago, uh, there was a big overhaul of our bylaws and some some things from a leadership and management perspective here at the chamber, mm -hmm. uh, which allowed us to hire more staff. Um, so we went from a staff of one to a staff of three, right. um, which definitely enables us to provide better service for our members sure. because the individual um, elements of the chamber are delegated to staff members right. who are then able to respond in a quick and efficient manner Amen to that. and take care of um, any items that you need. But but we do, we have 500 uh, businesses, uh, which translates to about 850 individuals because several oh, yeah. of our Higher tier memberships have multiple reps, right. um, and so that is who we answer to every single day. Right. Um, you know, it's it's interesting that you talk about delegation uh, because one of the things I've picked up with you in just a few months of being back at the chamber and watching you operate is that you are an incredible an incredible delegator. Not mm -hmm. only with um, not only with paid staff, but also with volunteers. And it's very important, uh, you know, as a service obsessed business, to make sure that. Um, you don't make people do something they suck at because they happen to be on the <laughs> clock. That's a very big. I, that's a very big pet peeve of mine. You know, um, I like for instance, I have nine subcontractors, and the reason I have nine subcontractors for a you know software, hardware, software, and audio video solutions company. So basically, mm -hmm. we are a tech company. Uh, basically, we do everything that the uh, one of the big box chains does. Only we know what we're doing. Um, and I delegate, yeah, I delegate. Hashtag shop small, shop local. Exactly. <laughs> the power. So I, um, I like how you threw that in there. I make it a point to never give, never force or never give somebody a task that they won't exceed at. Mm -hmm. And you have to know your people and you have to know their strengths and you have to play on their strengths. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do. And the reason that as a company we get rave reviews by our customers is because I don't send, you know, a cabling guy to put your TV up on the wall. That's a different guy. Right. It's a different skill set. It's a different way of thinking. And I, I'm not one of those people that believe that everyone can do everything well. I don't believe that at all because I've never seen any life experience that proves that to me. Right. You have to give people the job for the, for the, you know, for whatever whatever you're dealing with with that individual. You have to give them that job that they're gonna. Right. What do you think about that? What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that's probably another reason why you've seen so many changes within the chamber. Mm -hmm. um, we're very lucky that we have a huge volunteer base, but our volunteers are also running businesses full time. Right. Some of them running multiple businesses. Mm -hmm. um, and, by <laughs> <laughs> and by bringing in additional paid staff, it enables us in the office to handle all the logistics and the operational part of the chamber. Right. Um, and then it enables us to take those volunteers and build them up in the areas where they are successful mm -hmm. and where they can succeed seed um, and we do leave some of the not so fun tasks to our paid staff although they are very good at what they do as right, well so right. Lacey happens to enjoy doing our bookkeeping I do not so Ooh, not that's me. why we have her right. <laughs> well and you know it's it's what's very strange about the way people are is like what you said Lacey enjoys bookkeeping there are people out there mm -hmm. that enjoy bookkeeping now I hate it but <laughs> it's my books I'm keeping right so you know I you know, I, it's one of the tasks that I still haven't delegated. I, you know, I, I mean, I don't know what level of trust that's going to take. Uh, I may never cross that bridge. You know, <laughs> I want to know where every dime is going so that I, you know, that I can spend it effectively. Um, so you were also talking about shop small, shop local, mm -hmm. which is which is a which is a huge uh, plus for me uh, to want to come back to the chamber. That the leadership of the chamber gets that yeah you can get uh bigger memberships by bigger corporations but you're a chamber a, mm -hmm. and you and you call yourself the south tampa chamber right. you didn't call yourself the tampa bay chamber or the tampa area chamber or a hundred mile radius tampa chamber you called yourself the south tampa chamber right and you know for for someone to sit back and look at what that means and then implement on it is 
huge for me, mm -hmm. you know. And then you guys did the thing with American Express, which you you co-hybrided some kind of local with American Express thing, which I thought was awesome. Can you talk about that for a second? Definitely. Two two points. One, um, I want to touch on the difference between a regional chamber and a community chamber, okay. um, because we um, coexist and we work really well together, but we offer two very different things. Sure. So we do have a regional chamber here in Tampa. Um, they're a great economic driver for our community and for Tampa Bay, and definitely you wouldn't see a lot of the changes that are happening in greater Tampa um, as a region right. um, if we didn't have all the hard work that they're doing. Sure. Um, for us as a chamber, we're a community chamber, so we specifically focus and advocate for South Tampa and the businesses and residents that are here. Our regional chamber does as well, but just in a different way. Right. Um, so we're able to focus specifically on this community um, and to really work with those business owners um, to help them be successful and succeed, as well as to help connect them to the residents that live here and make sure that everyone can coexist in a great space. Um, our chamber is about 85% small business, right. um, which is why we put so much importance on it. Um, however, we do have larger corporations that are members as well. Mm -hmm. um, they're also important, um, but for different reasons sure, and the way sure. that they interact are different. Um, because there are um, a lot of our small business owners that are hired for certain tasks and services by those large corporations right. because they too believe in um, shopping small and shopping local. Not only that, larger mm -hmm. corporations have the ability to reach Mm -hmm. a greater market share than any of us small businesses would be able to do individually. So they are very important, um, in a, a part of the equation. Uh, but sometimes, it, you know, things get lost in the translation that they're the only equation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know what the statistic is now, but I'm sure it's, you know, still ridiculously high that, you know, most of this entire country is small businesses. Well, I know for Hillsborough County specifically, I believe it's about 75% potentially yeah. higher. I think those were the stats that <laughs> right. I was hearing. Um, That's pretty high. <laughs> yeah, it's very high. Um, it, during the campaign that we did with American Express, which is a national campaign that they do right. um, every year, it's right around that Black Friday holiday shopping season. Right. Um, so you have Black Friday, um, you have Shop Small Saturday, and then you have Cyber Monday. And so they all kind of coincide there. I guess we all take um, Sunday off. So, <laughs> um, you know, eventually there's just going to be 52 of those days in the right. calendar year, right? Right. <laughs> um, so Shop Small Saturday, um, we participated both with Hillsborough County and with American Express on some events that they did right. um, where we did contests and various incentives to encourage people to shop local throughout South Tampa, right. um, specifically at South Tampa Chamber member business. <laughs> um, and we're looking forward to doing um, a really exciting uh, program this year um, that our our women in business um, group is working on planning oh, very cool. um, that should be really fun so so have you ever ran a chamber before no no so ladies and gentlemen uh, <laughs> we're about to go hardcore for a minute what qualifies you to run a chamber uh well i think several this is investigative things. reporting here and now i feel like i'm back in my interview <laughs> um, i've sat on the board of directors for several membership organizations right. um, including a membership organization that was completely managed by our board of directors so we didn't have a paid staff okay um so all of the different areas of that organization were managed completely by our volunteer board um, i've sat on several other community organization boards as well and committees um, but my background um, is mostly sales and marketing and hospitality, which is probably why customer service is so important to me. Yes. Um, as a product of uh, Marriott International and Club Corp. Um, that's I heard something. they have an excellent training program. They both I've, do. I've heard that for years. They yeah. both do, yeah. yeah. Um, and so for me, um, I think my main goal here at the Chamber is to really work on connecting our community and our business owners. Um, and continuing to elevate what's happening here in South Tampa, being born and raised here and spending my life here. Right. Um, that you probably will find very few people as passionate as I am about what we're doing here. Um, so That's awesome. Um, before the interview started, you had said that you like to preserve things. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, you can't see it, it's off the camera, and I'll try to incorporate it somehow if I can get an accurate mm -hmm. picture of this thing. But there's a giant chamber sign on the wall uh, to my right, mm -hmm. and um, Kelly said that she took that, or someone took that. I don't think it was you. Personally. It was not me personally. <laughs> someone brought that sign over from the outside of the building. From the outside of our previous office. From the outside of the previous office, and brought it over here and and put it on the wall here, which I thought was interesting. Um, I don't know how I didn't know that, but I didn't know that, and it's very interesting because, um, you know, the reason I started the service station, and you know this logo and the old mechanic shirt mm -hmm. and uh, if you look at our website everything is black and white checkered and all the pictures are from the 50s um, 
it, you know, it goes back to a time where hard work and especially working with your hands was an honorable thing mm -hmm. and not looked down upon like a lot of people do nowadays. And, you know, I'll post pictures on, uh, on, uh, on Facebook or whatever all the time where, um, you know, men in uh, blue jeans built this company, men in suits destroyed it. And, you know, there's a lot of truth to that, unfortunately. And As I sit here wearing a suit today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I wear blue jeans every day. I have a meeting after this. <laughs> <laughs> but the point I'm trying to make is um, that, you know, when I got into IT, that was one of those careers, or IT is one of those careers that, you know, people think that because we're sitting in an air conditioner behind a desk hitting some keys that we're not working. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they come to that conclusion, but that's the conclusion they, they come to. And, uh, you know, I want to reassure you that uh, if one of our techs comes to see you to fix a problem, this guy probably has a million hours of his life behind a keyboard mm -hmm. figuring out and solving things. And the reason why he's able to solve your problem in three minutes is because he's bringing 20 years of experience to the table. And he's dressed comfortably. Yeah, no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> that has nothing to do with it. But, um, you know, it's, you know, I think more hard work and less get rich quick or flip this or flip this business or flip this house. Um, you know, the true entrepreneurs, the people that last, mm -hmm. uh, the businesses that last are never about the get rich quick. They're about the service, the customer as mm -hmm. much and as hard as you can. And, um, I just want to know what your thoughts are on, on that kind of, you know, because you were talking about, you know, preserving things. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually trying to preserve work ethic. Um, I'm all, I'm actually trying to preserve service. That's why I came up with the service station because when I looked around, I rebranded the company three years ago. It used to be called Rolando and Associates Consulting. And about two or three years ago when I decided to rebrand the company, almost none of my clients had ever met me. So here they are writing a check to a guy they've never met or a company they've never heard of or this, that, and the other. And it wasn't a good name for possible franchising locally and certainly not for going nationwide. Mm -hmm. So I, I went back to the service station. My dad was a mechanic when I was a child. Um, used to get his hands dirty every day, but my dad made killer money working hard, getting his hands dirty. So I went with the service station in that old look, in that old hard work, service, the customer comes first mentality. You know, because when I was a kid, you'd pull up at a gas station to get gas in your car and eight people would swarm the car and do all these miraculous things and vanish. Mm -hmm. And the bill was the same. Right. Like it didn't change. So I try to incorporate that level of service in, you know, my customer experience. I try to give them everything I can possibly give them at the same price that the other companies are just giving them the bare minimum for. So I w first of all, I'd like to know why is it so important for you mm -hmm. personally to preserve things and, um, because not everybody cares about that. And, and what do you, you know, what do you see in the future? Like, how do you plan to do more of that? I would really like to know. Well, our organization is 89 years old. Wow. So next year we're Couple celebrating <laughs> a big anniversary for our 90th anniversary. Oh, cool. We got um, a ball planned or what are we doing? We'll be doing something. <laughs> we will be doing lots of some things actually. I'm not quite ready to talk about this yet, um, but we have some really exciting things that'll be you happening next year. You have a marketing year. degree, don't you? I, my degree's not in marketing, but my 12 years of background is. She's always teasing. <laughs> teasing, teasing. That's what it's really all about, right? Um, the carrot. <laughs> but for us, uh, you know, really what it comes back to is our members. You're talking about the pictures on the walls in your office. Yeah. Um, yes, we have lovely awards and plaques and things on the wall here, but when you walk in, what you'll notice is it's photos of our members. Right. Um, and we did save the sign from our previous building because I think it's important to know where you came from in order to um, plan for where you're going. Right. Um, the very first photo you see is from our ribbon cutting with all the signatures of the 100 members who were here that night. Right. Because that way, as a member, every time you walk in, you remember that you got to be a part of the history of this chamber, sure. even if it was just for a moment. Sure. Um, so for us, um, preserving the history of the chamber and making plans to go forward, um, again, it comes back to those 500 member businesses because mm -hmm. everything we do every day is centered around our members. The programming that we do, uh, the decision to move into this office space, um, the decision to... Very nice takes, by the way. I like yeah, that. thank you. A little <laughs> moving on up um, to the Hyde Park side. Right. Um, but yeah, everything we do is centered around our members. And right. so um, for us, it's always moving forward as a chamber. How can we grow bigger and better 
um, to provide more benefits, more services, more opportunities for our members because we want your businesses to succeed. Sure. Uh, we're doing ribbon cuttings every day in South Tampa for all these great new businesses that are opening here. We're so excited. Um, but for me, the ones that are really exciting is when we get to go out and do one for a 25th anniversary, a 30th anniversary. Right. We did right. one last year um, for Bob Hatton uh, for 40th anniversary. Wow. So those are the ones to me that are really special. Um, and those are the people we need to be looking at because how did they do that? Right. There are businesses in Tampa that have been here for a hundred years. How did they do that? Wow, that's awesome. It wasn't easy, I'm sure. Well, they, they work <laughs> hard. Yeah, and they <laughs> they provide seen, great service. And they've seen two recessions, mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. That's awesome. So um, you, we have 500 members. How many members would you like? Five million? <laughs> there are, <laughs> I believe the last statistics I heard was there was somewhere around 8,000 businesses in South Tampa. Now, wow. a lot of those could potentially be people that are individual entrepreneurs who work from home sure. um, or who have a, a side business of some kind. Well, working um, from home is really common nowadays. Right. Yeah. Um, for us, I think our goal where we'd like to go in the next two years is to reach 750. Oof. Um, and that's where we'd like, that's our, our goal as a staff, and that's the goal for our leadership of where we'd like to see ourselves um, at the end of our 90th year. That's quite a leap. Mm -hmm. I think you can do it though. I think we can do it. I mean, especially if you know people are inundated it. with your name and the South Tampa Chamber everywhere they go for whatever reason. Well, not my name, <laughs> but the South Tampa Chamber. Um, but we we brought it up. Kelly Flannery is trending right now. <laughs> yeah. But we had 125 new members that came in last year to the chamber. Right. Um, one of the strategic decisions that we made this year um, was to bring in a full time membership manager, um, which we have not had someone that that was their sole primary focus. Um, even when I was in my previous position my time was split between membership and events right. and this person's role is a hundred percent membership recruitment and then with Lacey um, being promoted to our operations manager earlier this year her focus is a hundred percent member retention okay and so through those two endeavors I think we'll we'll very easily meet those goals and we're already um, exceeding um, where we were this time last year and you have the membership person that you're talking yes about her name is Rose Johnson her name is Rose Johnson hi Rose and you were one of her first official members, if I you was, remember. It was like I her was. second day yeah. when you signed on the dotted line. She was so nervous. She was. It was okay, Rose. I mean, <laughs> she was nervous. <laughs> she's doing great. Yeah, she's doing great. Um, so what do what can we expect? Like, what is on the horizon? What's the next big move? Um, I see that you're everywhere. I don't know how you do it, but she's backstage, VIP. <laughs> I mean, hanging with the mayor. Is there anywhere you're not? You and Rick Scott hanging out, the governor too? Or like... I have not met him yet. Rick. Yeah, I know we haven't met yet. Rick. Um, I know Rick. Should I put in the good word? <laughs> I actually did Rick in a video. <laughs> I did. I bought, I bought blue contacts. My head's already shaved. I already look like him, more or less, especially when I put a suit on. And I actually made a video where I was Rick Scott in the video. Remember the? Has he seen it? Uh, probably. I sent it directly to his staff. Oh. <laughs> Do you remember the, uh, the whole fan thing? There was a fan, oh, for the there was a fan the, story in the, the news debates. with yeah with uh, Charlie Chris. There was a fan story in the news. I actually was on stage as Rick Scott carrying a fan, talking to Rick Scott. And like if you look at the two Rick Scotts, it's crazy. You guys, <laughs> I'm out there. You know, <laughs> I like to do things differently. You know, I mean, you know what? One of my biggest pet peeves with marketing is, or just you know, marketing, branding, you know, uh, PR, all that kind of stuff, is every business owner in America small business, not big corporations, because they, they seem to have figured out just, just do a Super Bowl commercial every time you do something and it'll be, it'll be awesome, you know. But uh, the smaller businesses, uh, their marketing strategy is, hi, I'm so-and-so, I do the exact same thing everybody that I do does. Hire me. Why? Why would I hire you? There's no compelling message there. Give me a reason. Give me some passion. Give me right. something, you know. So I try to go a little out there to... It works. Though. Be memorable. Well, I'll tell you what. I put out, every time I put out a video, and I have one of my clients that thinks my videos are stupid, and they are. I'll be the first to admit my videos <laughs> are stupid, right? But the last time I was at his office, he says, "I don't even know why you do those things. What's the point?" Well, because every time I put one out, I get three to five jobs. It makes the phone ring. That's, that's totally, the point. That's totally worth it. You know, so whether it was stupid or not is really irrelevant. Does the phone ring? Is you mm -hmm. know, at the end of the day, that's really what I'm measuring. You know, my success by. How do you guys make the phone ring? Um, well, we offer events almost every single day of the week. If you really look at our calendar, the different things that we do. Um, so both I've for tried. Our, it's like looking at Tetris because yeah. there's so much on it that I can't. 
So um, for both our members and the greater community, um, we try to provide something for everyone. Um, one of the things we did last year was a membership survey where we sent um, okay. a multi-page survey to all of our members asking for their feedback and input on what it is that they want as members. What was the number one thing? Uh, the number one thing uh, was more education. They wanted more educational opportunities. Networking is great, but a chamber is a lot. That's a, that's one of the, probably the number one biggest misconceived things about a chamber is that we're a networking organization. We're not. We're a community and business resource. Networking is a benefit of your membership, and we provide lots of great opportunities for that. Um, mm -hmm. But we also provide opportunities to connect you with our local government and um, to help people find their passion, whether it be our education system or McDill Air Force Base. Um, and also to educate our members. And so that was one of the big programs we rolled out this year was an educational series. Um, we're in the middle of a four-part educational series on social media right now, where we're bringing in a panel of experts um, who are considered experts in their field, both inside of Tampa as well as out of Tampa, um, to come in and educate our members on, on their area of expertise. Have you attended those? I have. Okay, so what do you, you know, being an outsider, you're not in whatever they do for a living, that's not your business. Mm -hmm. What was the biggest aha moment you've had so far with that series? Uh, with that one, it's it's like anything else, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. Mm -hmm. And you can't just expect to put up a web page or put up a Facebook page and suddenly you're going to get new business. Right. Um, it's, it's having that interaction right. with people and taking five minutes a day to respond to uh, messages that you receive and to put up great content that Wait a people minute. find interesting. Wait respond to messages? Yes, no. respond to messages. Um, but also for us, because we're so busy as a chamber, we tend to want to put out a lot of information about our events. Right. Um, but we've also now started to put out more content that could be useful for you as a business owner, right. but also more content of what could be useful for someone who lives in South Tampa. Sure. Um, so I think it was like 4 o'clock this morning, I was posting a link from TBO about a, I know I'm an insomniac. That's how I get so much done. <laughs> oh, never sleep. Um, there was, but I, I came up in my Google alerts that there was a water main break, and I was like, oh, I need to share that on our <laughs> Facebook page so that people know for their commute to work this morning. Right, right, right. You know, to avoid that yeah. intersection. Unless so, you woke up underwater and then you knew. Right. right. Well, I didn't live in the neighborhood, so I was like. <laughs> Um, but those that's some of the information that we learned was really thinking about the content that you're putting out and how you can make your business a resource above and beyond the specific services that you offer on a day to day basis on a day to day basis. Have you noticed, you know, what you mentioned, just putting up a website and walking away, which I think is hilarious because I <laughs> people you know, do that. Yeah, oh yeah, I get people all people the time. People join the chamber yeah. and, and do that too. Yeah. And we're like, Yeah, you have to be invested. Yeah, you have to show up. You've every invested now and your then. money, <laughs> also invest your time and your commitment. Right, right. And that's right. that's the that's the magic formula. Right. So I've been working on this thing called uh, Be Everywhere, um, which I'm kind of following your <laughs> footsteps. Although I don't have the doors available to me that you do, but I'm working on it. Um, it's just funny that you know, because I get it all the time. People want me to build them a website, and you know, yeah, I can take your money, but the first question I ask them is. What's your goal? Mm -hmm. Why? Why do you want a website? What are you trying to accomplish here? Because if it's to you know, to have more clients call you than you've ever known what to do with, I, I'm not going to be able to help you, unless you have a plan. You know, you got to have a plan. So, um, the be everywhere approach. You know, join networking events or groups or chamber organizations, and then attend and have social media mm -hmm. and update it and then update it with content that someone might care about and don't mm -hmm. just vomit random nonsense all day long and it's all these things you know like getting up at four o'clock in the morning and, and sending something out there um, just you know a, a comprehensive approach because I don't think there is a, a sales funnel that has one point mm -hmm. I think if you're if you if be everywhere can find that they would be talking right. about <laughs> Your phone ringing off the hook. Right, right, right. If you if you have the be everywhere approach and you do everything to the best of your ability with whatever you know funds or staff you have available at the time, um, you know a lot of my work comes in. I, I don't even I didn't see it coming. Like oh okay that's how you found out about us or that's the person that you knew or that's yeah. the connection or this that and the other. But it's always it's it's always because of the be everywhere approach. I can't I can't tell you that there's one thing other than word of mouth that makes the phone ring mm -hmm. other than the be everywhere approach. 
you know, always somewhere, always doing something, always being well, we're involved. We're very lucky and, because we have 500 members who are right, everywhere. Right. Um, and like you said, that referral and that word of mouth, right. um, we do absolutely zero paid advertising nice. um, as a chamber. So every single thing we do is grassroots and word of mouth. Nice. And I would say that probably 80% of the new members that we have come in came in from a, as a referral from a member. Nice. Um, so that's why member keeping our current members happy and doing things like surveys and finding out what is it that you need and providing the benefits that our members ask for are so important um, because if you're passionate about something you're going to talk to everyone who will listen all about it right, right, right. Um, so if we can keep our members happy and passionate about the chamber and passionate about South Tampa as a community um, they're out there doing our marketing for us Absolutely. Um, which is really great because we want to continue um, to grow the membership the more members we have the more connections you get to make as a member and the more benefits that we can provide for you um, so you know, the uh, remember a member thing, I hear that all the time. Um, and I see it all the time. I see it in feeds. Uh, I see forwarded uh, information, shares, all that other stuff. And I see it at events. Um, it's really cool that you guys, like, really beat that message into the ground. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I used to be a radio DJ. And, you know, three years after I started at this radio station, we still kept calling ourselves the new, whatever the call letters were, I can't remember. And it was driving me insane. I'm like, because <laughs> you weren't new anymore. How long can we be new, right? And so one day I went to my boss and I'm like, dude, we've had the name of this thing for three years. I mean, how mm -hmm. how long can we be new? And he goes, till they get it. And I said, when are they going to get it? I don't know, but when they get it, they'll stop saying it. <laughs> and like, you know, the guy was a genius. You know, the guy had been in radio for years. He'd seen and done everything. And I didn't, I didn't grasp what he was talking about. I was like 22 or 23. I didn't know anything, you know. And um, and you know, it really made a lot of sense to me. You know, after you know, after I got older, with you know, doing my own marketing and branding and this, that, and the other, that, um, and and I and I read all the time from the from the you know most successful companies in the world that you can never over market. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you don't want to say the same message a thousand times every day, but say a slightly varied message every day somewhere. You know, and you know, people are so concerned with. Well, I just sent something out yesterday. I don't want to. I don't want to bother anybody. Okay, they're going to forget about you because <laughs> that's what happens. Out of sight, out of mind, you know. Um, and so, what are, what are the uh, you know talking about the social media stuff that you guys have been through and that you guys have learned? What are um, what are some of the strategies that you've picked up with not overdoing it and being you know not getting unsubscribed from your emails and all that stuff? Like, what what are the things that you guys Full, that well, are for you. multiple platforms right. when it comes to the emails. Right. Um, one, we try not to spam you. Um, so we send out a newsletter once a week and then individual um, event invitations per event. Right. But as a member, you have the option to opt in or opt out of either of those if you choose not to see them. Right. Um, the newsletter, we try to provide more than just here's a list of our events because you can find that information on the website. Um, so we also try to include content, mm -hmm. not only of what's happening in the chamber, but what's happening in the community, mm -hmm. um, as well as what are our members up to. If we have a member that won an award, if we have a member who's celebrating something, if we have members that are hosting events or programs, um, we feature that information as well. On social media, um, we do try to promote the events and things that we're doing um, mm -hmm. because some people, that's their preferred method of communication. Mm -hmm. But we also, um, like you said, want to share, remember a member program um, and share what's happening with our members. Right. Um, so anytime that we have members that do business together, anytime that our ambassadors go out to greet a new member and take them their plaque, we always want to share that information. Right. Um, people love to see photos. Mm -hmm. They love to be tagged in photos. It makes them feel included and it makes them know that they are a part of the chamber. Um, um, I think that that's something that people sometimes forget about a membership organization. Um, the South Tampa Chamber of Commerce, yes, we are a business. Yes, we have a great staff. Yes, we have a great board of directors, but we are not the Chamber of Commerce. You are the Chamber of Commerce. Right. The members are the Chamber of Commerce. And so everything always comes back to that. Um, so that needs to be very evident um, in all of our communication sure. because people need to know that's what it really is about is about our members and that's why we do promote the remember a member program so often it's why we do the printed directory it's why we have a mobile um, website that's easy to use it's why we provide everything we can um, in as many different formats as we can so that instead of googling instead of picking up a phone book you're going to pull out your chamber directory and you're going to refer to our directory first um, and look for another member to work with. Any plans for a uh, chamber app? In the Potentially. Yeah. I want to go back to um, passion. Mm -hmm. um, 
obviously I'm passionate. <laughs> I have a hard time keeping my <laughs> passion at bay. Um, but I find life is a lot more interesting the more passionate people you surround yourself mm -hmm. around uh, because there's always things happening around passionate people. Um, so how do you, first of all, why are you passionate? Like what made you this way? Were you just born this way or did you turn my into parents, this person? My parents, my family. They're passionate people? Um, they are. Well, my mom um, was oh, a small Irish? business owner. Well, yeah. Well, my family, my, my, my family is Irish, <laughs> as is my husband's family. Oh, so my God. we're Irish on all sides. <laughs> um, but my mom was a small business owner in Tampa for 35 years. What was the business? Um, she was a, a hairstylist and oh, cosmetologist. Very cool. Very cool. Um, and she and my stepfather now own a plumbing and mechanical company that started out of a bedroom in our home and 20 plus years later um, wow. is now doing huge jobs. Um, huge commercial jobs all throughout Tampa Bay. Very cool. Um, my grandmother was a small business owner. Um, she had a ceramic shop on Southdale Mabry oh, cool. um, that I spent a lot of afternoons at um, after school. So for me, I think a big part of what I do is from that. Right. Um, and that's why I connect so well with our members because that's what put food on the table for me when I was sure. a child. That's what put me through college was right. the success that my family had. Um, but also... My mother raised me um, constantly out doing things. She was constantly volunteering for organizations, oh, wow. um, either things that she was a member of or nonprofits, um, and that's probably what led me to um, to do so much service as well. Right. Um, whether it be working on a fundraiser or volunteering our time, my husband and I um, volunteer a lot at our church, um, and I think a lot of that was instilled in me from um, from my parents that you always do have to give back. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, it's funny, there's a movie, uh, something, The Warrior or whatever, it's about a guy that does um, rings, gymnastic rings. Okay. And Nick Nolte, of all people, is in the movie, and there's a service station, probably the most beautiful service station <laughs> that's ever existed in the history of service stations on some green, grassy knoll, you know, in the movie. And um, Nick Nolte runs the service station, and he's, uh, you know, a, a service station runner. We know he's got a mechanic shirt or whatever. And, uh, you know, the kid comes up and, and the kid comes up to him because he got hurt and he can't do gymnastics anymore. And, you know, they form a friendship, this, that and the other. And, uh, you know, the kid is, you know, you know, well to do, you know, came from super rich family with, you know, that, a castle for a house. He goes to a private school. Everything's been handed to him on a silver tray his whole life. And then his life is basically pointless once he can't do the thing that he's been doing since birth. And, uh, so he starts, you know, uh, talking down to Nick Nolte and he's like, oh, you know, so what? You're, you know, you run a service station. What's the big deal? And and the guy says in the movie, uh, really? No big deal, huh? Service? There's no higher purpose. Mm -hmm. And I had really never thought of it that way. You know, when I started this brand, I was so busy with the brand and the marketing and this, that, and the other. Um, you know, I, I went back to a, a time where service was very important, you know, and I had thought about it that way. Um, and I wanted to build a company towards that end, but then seeing that, you know, the way sometimes things just affect you, you know, the way he said it in the movie, this, that, and the other, uh, really like cemented for me again, um, uh, that not only, not only does that message have to come from me, it has to come from everybody mm -hmm. that I work with. Right. And I'm a big believer, you know, being ex-military and, and all, uh, lead by example. Um, I don't ever tell anybody to say or do or act in a way that they haven't personally seen me say act or do or whatever you know if I went to a job and you know we needed to run a cable in the ceiling I would have no problem pulling out a ladder and running the cable in the ceiling I'm not right. above anything right you know and I don't want and I don't ever want anyone that works for me to be above anything other than we gotta help this customer right this customer has a need we gotta take care of their need mm -hmm. and uh, so it's it's great to hear that you know from you and from other people it's just um, because that's something that has been lacking and you know I do these I do these funny things on my website your service sucks and I did them for a long time and I started doing your service rocks because every now and then I get great service right you know like the first time I went to you lately I don't know if you've been there or not mm -hmm. they blew me away yeah like I was like you gotta be kidding me this is this awesome the service was this good and the reason the story was so funny is because I was on a skateboard on a longboard uh, skateboarding one day and I'm all hot and sweaty I got shorts on and you know a t-shirt and I got my longboard and this that and the other and I, I walked up to the front and I'm like they're gonna tell me to get lost <laughs> yeah because I would yeah and I walk in there and and I asked you know is, you know like half-heartedly you have a table you know totally expected sir you can't come in here like that right 
And all three or four people working at the desk, including the manager, all of them turn around to look and find me a table and walk me to it. I'm like, you gotta be because kidding me. Because they were excited to have you there. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's always something that I find, um, I don't know the word, it's not entertaining because it's not good. Um, <laughs> for us at the chamber, we always want you, when you walk out the door, we want you to feel better than when you walked in. Yeah. And I think that's so important for any business. No matter what you came in for, we want to exceed your expectations so when you leave, you're feeling really great. So we have our happy walls. That's why we have such an outgoing happy. and happy staff. <laughs> um, but we, I often go into businesses and experience the opposite of, of what you're talking yeah. about. Um, and too busy texting and you think, Oh, <laughs> what kind she must be having a bad day today. Or he must have had a, he, so he must have something going on. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you, you, you read about businesses closing or things happening and you're like, Oh, wow. What a shock. <laughs> so well, when you do find businesses that excel, I think it is important to recognize them. Um, my background is a lot of restaurants and hospitality. And, and I know that restaurant managers tend to always get, um, the brunt of the bad when something sure. bad happens and, and we always will ask for the manager to come speak to us at our table when we have great service right. um, and you always see the the waiter or waitress's eyes get large like right. they're worried about what you're gonna do and it's because I want to be able to after you've eaten your food just so you know after you've eaten your food don't ever do that before you've eaten your food well but I always <laughs> tell them no I want to compliment you I want to let your manager know what a great job you're right, doing right, right. Um, and hopefully that makes a difference in their sure, day and that sure. if they if they took the time to provide good service that I take the time to, to repay that by making sure they're recognized. So why do you think as someone who may even get into more businesses than I do, because one of the one, one of the interesting things, my favorite part of owning an IT company is that I have been inside mm -hmm. so many businesses. It's ridiculous. And um, you know, you're never going to have a more intimate relationship than you are with your IT guy. Like I know more about people than their attorneys, their wives, and their accountants do. I know everything. Like I know every single secret. You know what I'm saying? And it's our job to keep those secrets secret. You know. Um, but one of one of the best parts of getting in those businesses is, or, or getting that level of access, is I've gotten to see how a business works, what makes it tick, and how all of the parts move together. So, because of the you know 20 years I've been doing this, it's very easy to walk into a business and go. Yeah, they're not going to be here in three months. Or this place is going to make a killing. You know what I mean? Like right off the bat because I've been intimate with so many businesses for so long. So for you as someone who, you know, gets to be, you know, have intimate relationships with business like I do, um, can you tell us a couple of things that you have experienced that were like, wow, you know, like even things that you haven't thought of or read about or this, that, and the other just really impress you about businesses? I think it comes back to that passion. If you have someone who really enjoys what they're doing and they're passionate about it, they're going to put that extra foot forward. They're going to provide that extra service because they're so excited about it that it's, in, that it's infectious right. and you get excited about it too. Right. Um, we've had, you know, we have members that do um, some very unique things. Um, one of our members, I'm, I'm sure you've probably worked with them, they recycle electronics. Yes. And who would think that recycling could be so exciting? Right. But the passion that she, and her partner have for their business yeah. and what they do is so evident in every conversation you have and every Facebook post they have and every yeah. presentation that they give right. that how can you not get excited yeah. with them yeah. so I think that's a big one yeah and there's um, someone that you want to really help. enjoying what you do and yeah. if you don't enjoy what you do if you own a business and you don't actually like what you do you need to go into a different <laughs> kind of business immediately immediately <laughs> please for the love of God you're um, making it miserable for the rest of us I think too, if there's an area we spoke about earlier, if there's an area where it's not your area of expertise, um, hire someone who who is that right. is their area of expertise, right. um, mm -hmm. or go you know take a marketing class or or come to a chamber event or do whatever it is you need to do to kind of load your toolbox for right. um, the tools that you need for success. Right. A lot of times I see businesses that struggle because they just don't know any better, right. and it's about making sure that you're educating yourself in the correct um, areas. That's why we have such a great partnership with Hillsborough. County SBDC with the Small Business Development Council mm -hmm. um, because we want to be able to provide all of the tips and tricks and tools and resources as a business owner that you could possibly need to be successful. But I think it really does come back to that passion because if you think about it, if you go to a restaurant that has okay food, mm -hmm. But their service is great and the atmosphere is great. You'll keep going back to that restaurant right. even though they don't have the best burger or the best pizza right. in town. But if you go to the restaurant with the very best food there ever was, right. but the service was bad, the atmosphere was bad, you were bored and you felt 
bad leaving there right. no matter how good that burger was no matter how good that filet was you're never going to go back right 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 i was just talking to a buddy of mine with that uh, yesterday um we went to a restaurant i had never heard of i don't know how because i've been in tampa on and off since 78 but there's a restaurant called bricados or something and they do Cuban sandwiches, and there's like a line around the building at this place. I don't know. Have you ever heard of the place? Mm -hmm. It's way out like on 50th in uh, the interstate, Columbus uh, and 50th. You know I don't leave South Tampa uh, unless I have to. <laughs> but I go out there and... We have a transportation problem oh, in the uh, city yeah. if you haven't heard. Well, a little bit. Are we working on it is the question. We are working on it. We're going to bust South Tampanians out to the... GoHillsboro.org. Uh, outer regions. Um, so I go to this place and I'm just blown away. Um, there's a line, you know, I, first of all, I don't know how there's a restaurant that has a line around the building that I've never heard of. And I've been here since 78. So I need to talk to your marketing people. You need to get out of South Tampa too. <laughs> right. That's the problem. I need to get out of South Tampa too. But you know, it was a great experience. And you know, like you said about the passion, um, it's so obvious, you know, there's a group of restaurants owned by uh, a handful of individuals on the street that we're in front of right now. And I don't care which one of these restaurants you go into, it's the exact same experience every time and it's awesome every mm -hmm. single time. And you're like, man, these guys have got it together. They, the machine is built, you know. I used to go out to a, a bunch of the clubs over here a few years ago and um, same thing, you know, you know, I've lived all over the place. I've lived in Los Angeles, I've lived in Miami, I've lived here, I live in Texas, you know, I've lived all over the place. and you know, a lot of times when you go to a nightclub or a restaurant that's um, upscale and you show up, you know, wearing what I'm wearing, you get treated different immediately. Now, they don't know whether or not I have a, you know, Rolls Royce in the parking lot. They're just making their decisions based on what I'm wearing. And there's a lot of places here that they have figured out mm -hmm. not to judge the book by the cover and treat everyone like gold from the get go. And it's just, it's awesome. It's just so awesome to get treated like that when you go somewhere because you should get treated like that right. when you go spend money somewhere. And most, you know, I would say most businesses, not in South Tampa, but just most businesses in general, act like they're doing you a favor by taking your money. You ever get that experience anywhere? Occasionally. <laughs> Occasionally. Occasionally. She's a politician. <laughs> no, I heard a story recently. Um, someone else was telling me a story they had gone into a, a shop to buy something um, in the the oh I don't know if it was the owner or who it was uh, was very busy with other customers and told them they were too busy to help them and could mm -hmm. they come back another time yeah um, that's one of my favorites Wow <laughs> how about wow. this how about this you ever go into a business and they're busy helping the person they're too busy helping the person on the phone to help you but I have the money right here. They're not even here with money. Can you? <laughs> That's where you have to learn to multitask because <laughs> right. you can do both. Well, I don't think, I honestly don't think that a register mm -hmm. should ever have a phone on it. If I had a storefront, there'd be no phone at the register. There'd be a person over there with the phone and then there'd be this person with the register or the phone would not have a ringer on at the register. Mm -hmm. And when they're not helping someone, then they can answer the phone. But some kind of process that puts the person standing in front of you waving money in some kind of priority. Because, you know, a lot of times, like, you know, with, with my company, we have a policy. We don't charge for phone calls. I'm not saying that we don't charge to fix something <laughs> on the phone. We don't charge for phone calls. Let's make that perfectly clear. So what I mean by that is if you were going to go get a laptop today, hey, Rolando, I need to buy a laptop. Mm -hmm. What do I do? And I said, well, I have a great guy for you. Here's my guy at this store. He's the guy I buy all my stuff from. And since this is all he does every day, he's going to be able to answer your question better than I will, more efficiently. Talk to him and you can buy it at the price I would pay for it. I mean, how much more can I help you than that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and that's, a, once again, assigning the right task for the right person. But I answer phone calls every day just to help people. Right. You know, but if someone is standing in front of me waving <laughs> cash, I'll call you right back. Let yeah, I think it cash. depends on the business and, and what's going on, <laughs> right. you know, at that time. Because a lot of your small storefronts, they may only have one or two people on staff at that time. But I think it's, there's a right way to do it. There's yeah. a right way to handle it. Can I put you on hold for one moment? Well, Can I take your phone number and call you right back? I want to yeah. give you my full attention. And staffing is a big, mm -hmm. is a big issue or a key issue that not enough people pay attention to. If 
if you only have two people in your store and both of those people are too busy for a year mm -hmm. to help another person that walks right. in the door, you might want to add a body. Add I'm just saying, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and, 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 but it's that mentality mm -hmm. of, well, I can make more money if I don't add a person. Right. No, right. actually you can make less money by not adding a person because potentially because yeah. if you if you fix all of the problems mm -hmm. that pop up and if you know like there was this thing i heard from uh, anthony robbins years ago it's called Ca connie or canny mm -hmm. canny connie c-a-n-i constant and never-ending improvement every day you have a company you should tweak everything that has an issue right. until all of the issues are resolved because every day there's another issue and so every issue you're not mm -hmm. tweaking, it just compiles and then you have all these issues. And that's why we made the investment in another staff member this year. Right. Um, we're hoping to do that again next year and to bring in a fourth staff member by this time next year. I'm not available. <laughs> I would love to work here though. This is pretty good. It's pretty sweet spot. I mean, you got Panera downstairs, you know, there are a thousand restaurants, a hundred feet from here. There's free a CBS, Wi Fi. Free Wi Fi. <laughs> but yeah. Awesome. Um, is there but, a bar close? There's several. We're on South Howard. Okay. I'll, I'll, thank you. I'm here. I mean. <laughs> there actually is a space for lease right below us. On the wow. Corner there. Um, so, Maybe I should do that. But yeah, but we made the investment in another um, employee this year for that exact reason. Right. That we wanted to make sure that we were providing that, that service. And we got to a point um, where we had grown so much over the past year right. that it didn't make sense to have two people here because Lacey and I weren't able to do 100%. So we needed to bring someone else in and that's why we made that decision. You know, I even go so far as I have techs, uh, you know, based on the, the way that I run my, my company, mm -hmm. um, the more work you take, the more money you make. I'm, I'm a very uh, rewarding kind of person to work for. Um, I, I, and I'm a very firm believer in the harder you work, the more money you make. Uh, you know, I don't like paying people to sit around. I like in incentivizing people, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, cognizant of the fact that, you know, because I'm the one that sets the schedule. When I see that my guys are overloaded, overloaded, even if they want the work, I'll give it to somebody else. I don't want overloaded people. Mm -hmm. I want you to make much, mo as much money as you possibly can, but I don't want you stressed out of your mind to do it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because there's a balance between how much money you can make and, and how stressed out of your mind you get because stressed out techs right. show up to people's offices stressed out right. and give them that stressed out you know and that's part of why we delegate the way we do and it's been a learning curve for us as a staff sure. and it's been a learning curve for our members because right. a lot of our members are used to coming to me for certain things right. um, that now I will um, delegate to Lacey or Rose and right. it's not because I don't want to help them right. but it's because this is Lacey's area of sure. expertise or this is the area that has been assigned to Lacey and she's going to be able to provide you the best service um, Lacey and Rose are our, our front line. Mm -hmm. They are um, the ones who are taking care of every person who walks in the door, every person who calls on the phone. Whereas my role has shifted um, and I'm more involved in the community at large right. um, and, and have stepped into a different capacity here at the chamber. Um, and so that's why um, training is important, making sure that all of us in the office are cross-trained, that there is a day if one of them is out doing something else that everyone else in the office is able to pick up where they left off. Sure. Um, but also making sure that no one is overloaded, that it's not one person attending all the events or one person um, who's opening the office every day, that those tasks are shared um, through the staff. Right. And um, members, at, at, in general, are the number one priority for all of us here at the chamber. Um, but for me, um, as the operational person overseeing um, our staff, for me, our staff is is dual, duly important. Mm -hmm. um, so for Lacey and Rose, everything is about our members. And for right. me, it is as well to a certain right. extent. But for me, it's, it's very much about our staff. Um, because of what I do is so different than what they do, and what they're doing is I need an answer right now or I need assistance with something right now versus most of what I do is set up through appointment and is, sure. is done a little differently um, in regards to partnerships and, and media inquiries and things like that. Yeah, it took um, me six months to get this interview. <laughs> Like no, I'm just well, you got it quicker than most people. <laughs> well, I'm very demanding. Less than a week. Usually, appointments are two to three weeks out. Um, but I make sure that I'm always available for them. So on that same standpoint of if right. someone's in front of you or on the phone or wherever they are, no matter what I'm doing, they always come first. Right. So right. I will always answer my phone when they call. I always will answer their text when they text. I will, they are always welcome to come in my office no matter who I'm meeting with right. um, because if they have a question and it's important enough to, to stop whatever it is that they're doing or stop whatever it is that I'm doing, it means that they need to get an answer back to a member right away. 
Um, and so that's always the first priority. So for me, it's keeping my staff educated, um, keeping my staff in a great place, keeping my staff happy and keeping them in a place where they feel confident to do a great job right. um, so that they can then in turn do that for our members. You know, it's um, it's interesting that you are, you're really running the company like a CEO. You, <laughs> you've backed out. No, seriously, you've backed out mm -hmm. from the day to day so that you can manage the growth of the company. Right. And part of these interviews, you know, there, uh, there's a lot of people that haven't figured out a lot of things about business yet. And, and really, I really want to help. I really want to help them because I get asked all the time. Like people ask me like, you know, how do you manage nine people? I don't. Mm -hmm. Why not? Because well, I hired exceptionally trained people and I give them a job and tell them to execute this, that, and the other. Blah, blah. I mean, there's a million, you know, there's a yeah. million variables to that. There's um, a difference between overseeing and micromanaging. Right, sure. right, yeah. right. And I can't, you know, I don't have time to micromanage my own schedule. I certainly don't have time to micromanage somebody else's schedule. Um, so it's, it's interesting that you've, you know, as a as a chamber, you know, leader have backed out, and you're running it like a corporation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's 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 really it's really cool to see you do that because a lot of chambers don't aren't run that way. A lot of chambers, you know, I've been a member of a lot of chambers and a lot of networking groups over the years and this that, and the other, and they're usually ran in a way that is most beneficial to the person in charge. Every, I don't know if you've ever seen that before, but a lot of groups I've been a part of or associated with. They're usually ran in a way that's most beneficial to the person in charge of the, of the group, and you don't do it that way. Mm -hmm. You step back and you know take a comprehensive approach in a way that's most beneficial to everyone. Involved. Right. And that's what's awesome about the chamber now. Um, are there any plans to target uh, youth, uh, youth, uh, you know, markets or segments or business owners or things like that? Because yes. I think the up and comers could benefit greatly mm -hmm. by the wisdom and experience of elder members you know in business and things like that um, two programs um, one is to bring back a young professionals um, group I remember that um, I haven't wrapped my head around completely what that's going to look like and we're meeting with a few of our up-and-coming chamber members sure. who are gonna help us do that right. um, because it's within their generation and we're speaking with them about what their interests are and, sure. and how to make that happen um, but we also implemented a new membership program last year it's called a community membership mm -hmm. and it's focused on two different areas one our full-time students Mm -hmm. So juniors and seniors in college, and one is for retirees. Um, so for two purposes. One, if you have you no longer have a business, but we still want to be able to retain that expertise and experience sure. um, within the chamber. And oftentimes those are people that are the most civically minded and still want to be involved in committees and groups and other things. But also so that we can take those juniors and seniors in, in college, help connect them to business leaders now um, while they're up and coming, help them get internships and potentially help keep them here That's after awesome. graduation. That's awesome. um, so it's it's only a $50 a year membership, which right. is very affordable sure. even for a college student. Um, they have limited benefits, um, but they're able to attend all of our chamber events, join all of our committees. They get a discount just like our regular membership, membership would. <laughs> no, you're not allowed. You're, you're, you're only allowed to market yourself in this, in, with that membership, not a business. Right, right. Um, but we did put that program in place specifically for um, to help bring up that next generation. That's very um, cool. We actually are working on some things um, with our education committee mm -hmm. um, in regards to that same thing. They're going to be giving a scholarship out this year to two high school students, two oh, high school cool. seniors to help them um, on their path to college. And then also, um, I think it's in April, uh, we have a business owners series that we do. It's a small group round table that we do monthly. And we have someone from UT who's gonna come out and talk about how to implement a internship program in your business. Right. And that'll be the last Friday of April. Um, and that is so that we can, again, start recruiting and retaining that talent here um, and keep our students here in South Tampa. You know, I think it's very important. Um, you know, not a lot of small businesses, in my experience, even pay attention to youth. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're usually paying attention to the 40 to 50, 60 year old businessman and targeting all their efforts to that. Um, but that guy's going to be retired in four or five years. Mm -hmm. And then what are you going to do for a customer base? You know, as an IT company, I, I kind of don't have a choice. Um, IT, you know, technology changes mm -hmm. daily. Like, I, I don't know, a hundred changes probably just happened while we're having this interview. But it changes so fast that um, we really have to stay up on what's going on because, uh, you know, the, the children of the business owners that mm -hmm. we do business for ask us to help them with stuff all the time because, you know, they're already using us for IT support anyway. 
Um, you know, so I think it's very important that business owners, you know, bigger companies get it. Like, you, you know, you look at the apples of the world, you know, everything they do is targeted to, towards a younger demographic, but they still manage to keep people through the, the lifespan of their products and this, that, and the other. And um, I think it's very important for small, you know, smaller businesses to, to focus on that area because if not, you're going to be out of business every 10 years. Like mm -hmm. you really need to recycle the crops, you know, all the time yeah. uh, because you're, 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 you know, the people that you currently do business with aren't going to be doing this forever, you know. And uh, it's cool that you guys are paying attention to that and have steps in place to, uh, to deal with that. Is there anything about the chamber that you want to talk about that I didn't, bring up investigate that i don't know about that you're keeping a secret well it's not a secret from? but the taste of south tampa is <gasps> coming up on april 12th that is coming up it's our largest event of the year it's going to be held at george steinbrenner field this year wow how did you get that <laughs> no seriously how did that happen i went and met with them and said we want to host an event is it here. big enough for that yeah wow and so ray j next year <laughs> uh, I don't know about that. We, we actually, we're limiting the tickets to 2,000 tickets um, because we do want it to still be an intimate experience for the people that are attending. Um, and By intimate, she means there's going to be a lot of wine. There'll be lots of wine. Yeah, so. um, and Anheuser-Busch <laughs> came on um, as our beer sponsor this year. Very so cool. we'll have lots of great beer available as well. Um, and several of our restaurants are bringing um, craft cocktails. So it's going to be a great event. Um, part of the proceeds go to Metropolitan Ministries, okay. and last year we collected over 900 pounds of food during our food drive for Metropolitan That's Ministries, and we'd like to see that um, get up to closer to 2,000 pounds of food this year. So, so that will be collected at? The it's collected at the event. Okay. Um, we do a raffle or a door prize giveaway, but the only way to get entered is if you bring candor box food item. Is there any so, entertainment at the uh... There is. We'll have a live band oh, nice. um, out in the general admission area, and then additional entertainment in the VIP. Do you know what the band is? Um, it'll be provided by Brazen Entertainment. Okay, very cool, very cool. That's awesome. Wow, this so the event is really on a larger scale this year. It is. Like it's like you stepped it up tenfold. <laughs> we last year was the biggest that we've had. Um, last year, I believe we had thirty-five restaurants um, wow. and over eighty exhibitor booths and about sixteen hundred attendees. And so we're expecting this year to be a little larger than that. Awesome. And everyone who attends also gets a free ticket to the Tampa Yankees game following the Taste of South Tampa. Oh, very cool! On the same day. Same day. Wow. So we end at four. Game starts at five. And we can clear out that quick? We're going to be in the concourse level, <laughs> okay. um, undercover, which is nice. Woo! Hey, I was wondering, that was my um, next question. You'll, but you'll have access to go out um, and enjoy um, your food and beverage overlooking the field, and then go ahead and clean your seat for the game later that night. So I noticed you were on a boat this weekend, as was I. I was. Yeah, and you were uh, in front of, what's that ship called? Ga the Jose Gaspar. <laughs> the Jose Gaspar. A uh, little hot outside? That's not too bad <laughs> when you're on the water. No? Wow, well, it was hot for me. Well... You know, it's been six months since I went outside. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't typically go outside unless it. Well, I don't go on my boat unless it's eighty-five because yeah. it's colder on the water. I don't, you know, a lot of people don't know this. It's a lot colder on the water. It is going fifty miles an hour mm -hmm. than it is on land when it's you know 75, 80 degrees outside. So I went out and I got thirty degree burns on my back. I'm a crispy oh, no. critter right now. <laughs> I, I wear like seventy degree sunscreen every day all day really? long, even if I'm not have no plans to be outside. Oh, so. Wow. Um, You're always for protected. a boat day, there's yeah. a hat and like a cover up <laughs> and reapplying sunscreen like every 60 minutes. Um, the reason I brought that up about it's that Irish skin, <laughs> <laughs> right? Right, right. How come you didn't get the ginger hair? What happened to that? I'm half Italian. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Wow, there's an interesting combination there. So, um, the, the reason I bring that up is you know, I mentioned earlier in the interview that I have lived all over mm -hmm. uh, this country. And if, if I haven't lived somewhere, I've stayed there for an extended amount of time at the other places uh, to really get a feel for the area. You know, I've, I've been to, you know, for, to D.C. for weeks on end, San Francisco, New York, you know, just nature of, you know, either my job or what I did in the military, this, that, and the other. And I can tell you with 100% certainty, there is no better place to live than Tampa Bay, nope, in my not. opinion. I've been everywhere, and this is it. This is as good as it gets. Mm -hmm. And I started doing these uh, events. Uh, I, I did the uh, I do these events emails that I started. I got it this out. morning. Yeah, I started sending these out about two months ago. Initially, they started as text, but then I, I remembered nobody reads anything. Like I could send an email, your building is on fire, and no one would even open it. So I just stopped doing text, and I started doing video, and I started sending these things out. And the more research I do on weekly events, 
in this area, mm -hmm. if you can't have fun in Tampa, <laughs> seriously, yeah. kill yourself immediately. Because well, don't there's, do that. There's so don't much do that. Maybe to do. just move. Don't do that. <laughs> there's so much to do mm -hmm. in this area on a weekly basis. It's mind boggling. Do you notice that? Yeah. Like it's like every week I, I look at my check and I'm like, how am I going to divide this among all these things that there's so much to do? You got to pick and choose. It's insane. It is. You know, like this, this week alone, there's, there's Nickelback, you know, I'm, I'm going to that concert Friday. Um, there's the Gasparilla Film Festival mm -hmm. is starting. Uh, there's just, you know, Eric Church is coming. I mean, there's so much going on every week that it's insane. And I've, like I said, I've lived all over the country and I've never experienced anything like this mm -hmm. and I don't know who's responsible for these uh, spring beer flings and the bourbon and brew and all these events that it like in the last two years Tampa has just become eventopolis well we've also you know? developed all these great parks and recreational oh, yeah. areas yeah. that we didn't the river have walk before is insane. and yeah. so it's kind of one of those if you build it they will come yeah. type situations they certainly have <laughs> um, so now we need to build a really great awesome park in South Tampa um, that can there accommodate these large events. We have a lot of small little parks. Yeah, um, like the, the one largest park that we have here in South Tampa would probably be Gadsden Park outside of McDill Air Force Base, um, which hopefully will receive some love yeah. and attention in the upcoming years. Right, It'll be right. something that we'll be focusing on here at the Chamber. Oh, okay, cool. Very cool. And uh, is there a timeline for that yet? Or? There's not. Um, it's in partnership um, with the McDill Air Force Base Public-Private Partnership Initiative. Mm -hmm. And so um, we'll be working over the next couple of years with the City of Tampa to hopefully revitalize that park in that area. But there's nothing set in stone at this point. And if you can't, if you're not a big events person and you just live on Howard, mm -hmm. you're done. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. You know, there's great restaurants, morning, noon, and night, breakfast, mm -hmm. lunch, dinner, drinks, after work, during work, late at night. I mean, it's... It's awesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you, I, I, are you as in love with Tampa now as I am? Or? I'm so in love with Tampa. It's really crazy because growing up here, most of what's here now was not here. Right. And maybe I just wasn't old enough to enjoy it. No, it wasn't here. <laughs> I got here in 78 um, and we had the Rowdies mm -hmm. and we had Tampa Bay Mall and the airport. That yeah. was it. Um, but I moved away for 10 years and then came back in, 2000, in 2007. Where'd you go, Ireland? I uh, was in Tallahassee <laughs> and oh, okay. then um, in Chicago. Oh, okay. Another great Irish city. Right, right, right. Um, but coming back to Tampa, even just over the past, it was a huge difference from when I moved away to when I came back. Sure. But even more so over the past um, There's a UPS. You know, five years There's that we've seen even more. Oh, uh, those are our you, office but... supplies. <laughs> Do we got to let them in? We do. Lacey will let them in. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm delegating. Right, right, right. <laughs> I knew somebody was going to show up there. But yeah, the last, um, I think just the changes that have happened over the past five years have been exponential for Tampa. It's insane, right? Mm -hmm. And what's really crazy is I'm not necessarily sure that the economy has picked up that much, but something is happening. I think it has. If you look at all the new homes that are being built, especially yeah. in South Tampa, you can't drive down a street without seeing construction right now. Well, especially right across the street here. Right. And then you see all the new restaurants and stores that are opening. Um, like I said, we do anywhere from four to eight ribbon cuttings a month. Right. And those are all brand new businesses wow. opening up in South Tampa. Right. Um, and so there has to have been something that shifted. And I know a lot of people get frustrated about things like construction with the road you know, being torn up or right. um, you know, the house next to them you know getting torn down but for me i i look at that like oh that's great look what's happening in our community this is this is new new money coming into the community right. new business opening up in the community a new family that we're going to be able to support you know for me that's great i look at it as look what's happening in our community how much we're growing and expanding and all the great things that are happening here it is changing i have you know the best man at my wedding uh you know a guy that i've known for 20 years hasn't been here in 10 years mm -hmm. and you know he's threatening to come visit me and that's one of my favorite parts about living living in florida is everyone comes and sees you eventually they do. you know and uh i keep telling them i'm like you have no idea what you're in store. This is not the town you left. It's mm -hmm. not even close to the town you left. You know? Even just all the museums and things on the occasional oh, yeah. day that we get rain during the summer. Yeah. Um, all the new museums and things that have opened. Um, and the fact, it, South Tampa specifically, we're centrally located. You can go over a very short bridge and get to St. Pete where they have a whole other world of awesome things it's happening beautiful over, over there. there. I love it over there. So have we covered everything that you wanted to talk about? I think so. Okay. I think so. Didn't leave anything out? No, our, our big focus is right now Taste of South Tampa, so 
Hope to see again? everybody there April 12th. Is there a website for that? www.tasteofsouthtampa.com. Is there a website for the chamber? SouthTampaChamber.org. Is there a phone number for the chamber? 813-637-0156. There's also a Twitter, a Facebook, a new Instagram account that I just started on Saturday. Uh-oh. Um, a YouTube and a Google Plus. So you can find us one if, way or another. If you can't, we don't. Right. <laughs> or you can come. Come to the office. Our oh, yeah. new office. Yeah, he did. The yeah, the UPS, UPS guy. guy. <laughs> he found us. All right. This is the service man signing off with another uh, service station prevents. Pre prevents. Prevents. <laughs> Presents an SOB interview service success business with Kelly Flannery of the STCOC. South Tampa Chamber of Commerce. Did I get that right? I did. Yeah. Hashtag STCOC. You heard it here, folks. Thank you. Thank you. You did great. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Thank you. Yeah, it was fun.